Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And today I'm very happy to welcome Richard Barbieri from Porcupine Tree to the Prog Talks. How are you doing, Richard? Very good. Very good, thanks. In Great. Berlin today. Yeah, great great to talk to you. And uh, yeah, Porcupine Tree is back after 12 years. And um, uh, my first question would be, were, were you aware in, in, in this time, like in, the, in this time span where... Uh, Porcupine Tree were on this hiatus, indefinite, not really uh, announced anything. Were you were you aware that that like the um, the the, the um, cult status of Porcupine Tree was kind of kind of growing uh, with with each year, and and fans were uh, like desperate for you to return. Um, I wasn't I wasn't aware that it was that that bigger thing but then when i looked at um steven's solo kind of career and i saw that he was getting asked a lot about it and he had a lot of people saying when is the group coming back when are you going to do porcupine tree it was always there it never went away so i didn't know that the reaction would be this big but um yes i think because of the body of the work And the quality of the work, I think people have had time, new people have had time to get into the band and, and discover what we were about. And so I think it's taken on quite a big deal now, you know. Yeah, there, there, there were 10 studio albums to discover until now. And then yeah. now, now there's the 11th studio album coming out, Closure Continuation, on June 24th. Hmm. And um, it is said that um, the songs on Closure Continuation uh, were kind of developed over those 10 years until 2020, until you, you, you the three of you, uh, Stephen, uh, Gavin, Harrison, and you uh, got together again to record them. Um, were they all uh, coming like like the, the basis of the songs, were they coming from Stephen or, or, or uh, did all of you have like bring bring some uh, ideas into the, the sessions that the recording sessions in 2020 and 21. Well, this album is the first Porcupine Tree album to be written with all the members. So it's a co-written album. Um, and the timeline was a bit different for me from the other two. So Gavin and Steven started working as early as 2012 together. And Stephen started playing bass and composing with bass. And they were working together in the same room. So it's a very interactive kind of uh, process for them. I didn't really get involved at all until about 2015 when I first heard a few tracks that they'd made together. And I heard of The New Day as well. And I was really impressed. I really loved it. Um, but even then... Stephen was still saying in interviews, no, we're not getting back. And so um, I started writing more music and I started sending things to Stephen. And my process of writing with Stephen is different. So I'm more concerned with the sound design aspect and the atmospherics and the emotions of, of the piece. So I would send him my ideas and then Stephen would try to construct songs around, around these. With Gavin, it's a more uh, physical thing where they're working in the same room together. So my involvement happened more uh, later on, but by 2018, 2019, um, when Stephen's tour got cancelled, solo tour, um, and then we had the pandemic, this really speeded things up. And then we, we, we wrote more tracks together and then the whole process was accelerated. <laughs> and we knew we had, we, we knew we had a porcupine tree album that, Sounded different, but still had the DNA of Porcupine Tree. Yeah, you you, men you mentioned uh, the, that that Stephen started 
uh, writing on the base and and I noticed uh, listening to to an advanced promo stream of the album that the bass is very very prominent in 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 the songs and in the sound design but yeah. you, of course you also mentioned that you are you are um the the sound design is your thing mm. and uh looking at your solo uh, uh stuff as well you 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 put out a couple of solo albums and EPs in the meantime right Mm-hmm. Um, you're you're exploring usually more ambient and more more soundscapey yeah. um, worlds, musical worlds. Um, mm-hmm. With Pocket Pantry, there's um, at least after a certain point in the discography, I would say also like a like this very um, almost metal um, yeah. uh, or prog metal uh, riff approach that is seeping in into some parts of the songs mm. is it for you as a keyboarder who is usually uh, in more ambient uh, worlds at home is mm. it different for you to approach these parts these more rock or more metal more aggressive parts uh, yeah. when when you go into the sound design um and and um yeah compose your your yeah. part <laughs> or yeah, yeah yeah exactly i mean uh this kind of started around the in absentia album as you say with the the heavier riffs and the more metal kind of approach. Yeah, it's more it's more challenging because you you have to find the space. You have to find the space and you have to find the uh the frequency and the position of where you can place things. And it's interesting. Obviously, if you're working with a metal track then you my approach would be more dynamic. So I would start using more distortion on on the keyboard sounds, maybe more aggressive sequencing sounds, um, possibly more abstract. Um, but either way, it's always a case of trying to find the space. And I've made it work with with rock music. And obviously with this new album, there's a lot more space. So probably my more ambient and atmospheric sounds are coming through more on this album yeah i I thought especially in the uh, centerpiece maybe dignity in the middle i i I noticed there's there's a lot of ambience and and soundscape uh, going on Uh, a little bit less metal way yeah that's a good example of the way i work with steven so that intro is something that i already had written and that kind of inspired him to think of this kind of storyline with a lyric and he came up with this kind of lyric of this homeless guy who's kind of uh, looking back on his life and it's like this journey and so when I heard the lyrics and I got the the music back I then started to uh, work on placing this intro back in like the schoolyard so I was imagining this guy back as a child And so I then started to put sound design of the playground and this kind of little boy singing. And that, again, built on that atmosphere. And then the song progressed and then we go back to that section in the middle. And that was a very successful example of the way that uh, I can work with Stephen. It's a totally different way that Gavin works with him. Yeah, wonderful. And there's even like this super beautiful melodic bass solo in the middle that there kind, is, of, kind there of caught is, yeah. me off guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a catchy part of the whole of the whole song. Yeah, and there's there's a kind of bass playing on this album that we've never had before, and this is primarily because Steve's playing the bass like a guitarist. So you're getting a lot of high melody lines, a lot of stuff up the fretboard. Yeah. Um. Going on in the in the in the track list, um, heard calling and walk the plank. I thought um, there's the, I, I got two thoughts on the on the songs. Uh, um, like like for once, especially on on walk the plank, but I think also on heard calling. There's um, there's some electronic um, stuff going on from you, yeah. and uh, in contrast, Gavin's drums uh, have a very organic and 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 warm sound um so was it was this a deliberate approach to to uh, like combine these two worlds together well it's a nice combination it's a combination i love is uh, electronics and acoustic um gavin's preference for his drum kit has always been to have a very natural sound um 
So he doesn't really like to play around with the sounds too much or distort them or, or kind of mangle the sounds. Um, so he has a traditionally good sound on the kit. It's a pure kind of sound. Um, and it works really nicely with the electronics. And they're the kind of two extremes that you get in Porcupine Tree from the, the, the performance based side and the random abstract electronic side. And especially in that track, I quite, I quite like that. It's kind of, um, sounds like a mad professor in a laboratory with these <laughs> electronics <laughs> against this really beautiful drumming. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the two extremes. Uh, the other thing um, I uh, realized um, on most of the tracks of Closure Continuation is that there's there's indeed these two extremes in another way, in a different way, um, uh, which would be that I think most of the tracks or or like a substantial number of the tracks, they do, they do have these these beautiful melancholic melodies that um, were kind of in the middle era of Porcupine Tree, I would say, um, Stupid Dream and Uh, um, these days, and and also Stephen explored with with Blackfield a little more, um, mm. but then you have like juxtaposed these uh, abrasive metal riffs, and um, you already mentioned that that uh, you realized at one point you have a new Porcupine Tree album that sounds different, but mm. also um, yeah, still sports some quite core elements uh, Porcupine Tree. Have come to 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 be known for. Um, w would you say this is the definite Porcupine Tree album now? It it kind of is, and you're right in what you say. And a lot of people have commented as well. They they know it sounds like Porcupine Tree, but it, it sounds different. It has all the elements from previous albums, like you say, the melancholic vocals, the The, the ambient passages, sometimes the metal guitars. It has has all those elements, but it doesn't sound like any other Porcupine Tree album. I think possibly because it's the first album with just three people. There's no other guest musicians. There's no other vocalist. There's no other guitarist or orchestration or instrumentation. It's just the three of us. So it's kind of distilling down the, the elements of Porcupine Tree. Um, on the one hand, the, the the kind of sound design and the atmospherics and textures to the uh, drumming polyrhythms, inventive patterns of the complex drum parts. And in the middle, Stephen's ability to craft these all together into, into songs. That's that's what the band is. And, and that seems to be distilled into this album. That brings me to 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 the bonus tracks, and and the, there's three bonus tracks apart yeah. from the seven main tracks, and the last one is called Population Three. And so, and so it's a, it's an instrumental track, and and I I think it's it's brilliant. Is that is that kind of a hint of the Population Three of Porcupine Tree Land? Well, it's a good title. <laughs> yeah, it seems it seems to work well. Um, that's yeah, as you say, an instrumental track. Yeah, that's quite. Um, quite a progressive kind of track I'd say that was written by Gavin and Stephen and um, yeah that track we, we felt couldn't quite fit into the album um, but you know they're, they're all of, of the same standard there's a track called um, oh, what is it Loving in the Love in the Past Tense in yeah. the Past Tense I love that track I think I think that's really of the same quality but We just wanted to make an album that came in under 50 minutes. Um, I think people's attention after that point, even if you're enjoying something, I think it just goes, it goes for me. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you, you already uh, announced uh, some tour dates, 13 tour dates in, the, in North America and uh, 12 uh, in Europe uh, later this year. Of course, people are... Uh, all, already wild uh, um, uh, speculating about the touring lineup um, and 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 how the preparations for the for the tour is going and uh, of course the 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 vacant position on the base uh, people were or also speculating that uh, is Stephen might play the bass live 
Do you have any news on that that you can reveal right now? Well, I can reveal it, it will be a five piece band. Um, there'll be a bass player and a guitarist joining us for the tour. Um, we've had rehearsals with them already, and it's working fantastic. Sounds sounds absolutely fantastic. So we'll let people know about who they are very soon. <laughs> very soon. Um, so yeah, it it will be the classic five piece. Okay, wonderful. It's being also hinted at in the press releases that that those might be the only uh, um, dates supporting uh, or promoting mm. um, closure continuation. Mm. Uh, is is there is there any any plans on ex extending the touring for this album or will it will it be this? I think, the... <laughs> yeah, I think I think this will be it. Uh, the thing was was that. We didn't want to go on tour for long because if you're on the road for too long, eventually you can't give the same performances all the time. You know, eventually it, you become a little bit complacent. It becomes too relaxed. Um, life on the road can get a bit hard as well. We, we just wanted to condense this so that we can focus 100% on every single show and make every show something vital and important. Um, of course, if we were doing two or three months touring, then we could have played theatres and made the shows more intimate, which I know the fans would prefer because the sound is better and you're closer. But because we were only playing this amount of shows, the venues had to become bigger. Because there's such a demand. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah, and it's a change for us. So there's going to be a big production. You know, we have to go into these places and we, we have to feel fill these spaces so we've we've got to have production to do that so everything's become bigger more expensive more people um but we feel that we can put everything into those shows if we'd made it three or four months and toured everywhere we wouldn't be giving up our, our best every night All right. Uh, before I let you go uh to to attend to more interviews I guess of today um Do you have any favorite um, Porcupine Tree song from the discography and or also from the new album, Closure Continuation? Um, well, my favorites from Closure Continuation, not surprisingly, are the ones that I was involved with, <laughs> more, uh, which is Dignity and um, Walk the Plank. And from Pass, well, there's so many, so many tracks. I mean, probably... One of the best tracks that summed up the band and was amazing live was a track called Anesthetize, which is this absolute epic track. Um, and on the live album, Anesthetize, uh, and the DVD, I think that performance on stage was was amazing. I think that was better than on the album. But of course, I love I love things like Collapse the Light from um, In Absentia, uh, Lips of Ashes, Heart Attack and a Lay-By. In Absentia had a lot of really beautiful songs on it. Everybody thinks that was a, a metal album, but it had some. It had some really. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it's a metal album. Yeah, <laughs> not as much as Fear of Blank Planet was. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I guess so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. One very last question: Is it? Uh, does it feel for you to be more of a closure or more of a continuation? Well, we don't know. That's that's the reason behind the title, and that's the interesting part. We don't know. We're happy either way, um, because we've made a great album, and it's going to be a really fun tour. So, if it's closure, then then we're satisfied. If not, it could be in two or three years, we might make another album. Stephen says it's possible. He's more likely that we could make an album, but maybe not do any more shows. But who knows? Wonderful. We'll see. Um, I guess it's safe to say uh, Closure Continuation is the most anticipated album of the year in the prog world. Uh, thank you, Richard, for taking your, uh, the time to talk to us today. Um, all the best with the release and uh, hope to see you on tour. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much. As always, thank you for tuning in. 
And if you want to keep up to date, uh, who's going to be in the touring band, uh, go like and uh, subscribe to all the social media channels of Porcupine Tree. And uh, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe our page as well, theprogspace.com on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. And you can also so get us a nice cup of tea or coffee. That helps us out a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, take care of yourselves. Until next time, keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by The Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week. <laughs>